All right, I was on uh, Craigslist last night and I saw this and um, I've always wanted one of these. I don't know what I'll do with it, but I've always wanted one. I think a lot of people are in that boat. Um, it is a cool filter. It is a uh, high pass, low pass um, filter and um, you can set the high pass and low pass and it becomes a band pass filter. And it'll go from times one to times 10. So it'll go from 10 Hertz to uh, 10 K one meg, a megahertz or does it 10 megahertz? Uh, let's see, this is a hundred kilo. Yeah. For, it goes to one megahertz. So, um, 10 Hertz to one megahertz. So kind of in the audio range and yeah, there's not much to it. Uh, these are really old school inside. I think we'll have a lot of fun looking at the schematic for this thing. And let's take a look at the back. Anything to see there? Probably not. Uh, output and input. Input. Oh yeah, input, output, it's a filter, right? Input, output, and uh, response. You can have a maximally flat response or an RC response that has a... So maximally flat is going to be a Butterworth filter and RC response. I don't know what kind of filter that's going to be. So one's going to be sharper than the other, I think. Uh, so 110 volts. One eighth of an amp, so it doesn't take much. And... Um, Let's see. It is a Kronheit model 3103. So I know there are schematics online. I check that before before I buy anything. I make sure I can get schematics. Uh, but this is owned by Ampex, which so that makes sense. Ampex did a lot of uh, audio uh, recording stuff, right? Tape to tape uh, and ta reel to reel tape equipment and stuff. Very famous for that. So yeah, this used to be owned by somebody who designed audio stuff. So that's pretty cool. So um, I got this for 30 bucks. And he said, you want some more stuff? <laughs> so I don't know if you remember, I bought some um, HP microwave amplifiers and uh, he uh, again sold me some stuff and then gave me a bunch of stuff. He gave me some uh, attenuators and he gave me some other stuff. Anyway, same guy. <laughs> I saw his, uh, on Craigslist they don't say who it is, but um, it shows kind of the area it is. And I go, oh, that's probably that guy. <laughs> and so uh, we had a real long chat too about the old HP days and stuff. So uh, he's, he used to work at HP. He used to build uh, counters at uh, microwave counters in the uh, HP days. Anyway, so like I said, I bought this for 30 bucks and then he threw in a bunch of other stuff. So let's take a look at the freebies. All right, this is freebie number one. It's a Philips pulse generator, one hertz to 100 megahertz. And uh, let's see, rep rate, delay, width, and amplitude into 50 ohms. So that's pretty cool. Uh, gated or continuous pulses, double or single pulses, inverted or normal pulses, and then plus and minus uh, sync out. Sync out and pulse out and then rise and fall ramp rate. So uh, it goes from four to 50 nanoseconds up to two to 100 microseconds. So you can adjust the ramp of the pulses too. DC offset, it's got a bunch of uh, adjustments and stuff that, that can come in really handy sometimes. Um, yeah, I have some function generators and stuff that just hasn't, doesn't have enough offset. Uh, that, that's really valuable. Just, they just don't have enough offset. So this looks like a good one. I don't know if it works or not. I think it does. I think he said it. I think this one works, but uh, this will be a, a great one to take a look at the schematic on as well. I don't, I don't know if this is a, I have the schematic for this one or not. So uh, I'll have to, I'll have to take a look, but uh, yeah, this thing's heavy too, man. Uh, look at the heat sink. It's all the huge cast iron or cast aluminum heat sink on the back and two big push pull, uh, Transistors on it. It's got the new style, uh, new style cord on it. Uh, I don't know what the date is on this thing, but uh, yeah, it's got the huge, uh, huge transformer in there. So it's got a linear supply in it. So that's pretty cool. All right, that's free item number one. Okay, free item number two is a eight one one two A pulse generator. Uh, it's missing a switch here, a range. A range switch and I don't know if these work. I think these don't work. So um, 
I have the matching, um, here, let me re rearrange the camera. So this is a matching product. This is an 8111A pulse function generator. Um, so these were designed in Germany. These were uh, designed in Berbling. And um, so now I have the 8112. So I have the 8111 and I have the 8112. All right, like I said, this was a freebie. Uh, let's go to, uh, oops, let's go to a different freebie. All right, the next freebie is an 8112. So I now have a, a second one. Uh, so I guess I've got spare parts now if mine ever breaks. Um, I don't know if this one works or not either. So we'll have to figure, figure this one out. I think you remember I actually did a series on the first one that I had. I rebuilt the whole thing. I recapped it all and uh, put new pat capacitors in and, and aligned it and everything. So uh, anyway, I think I'll probably uh, probably just keep this one for spare parts and stuff. But uh, if, I can get it, if I can get it working, maybe it's... Uh, Something I can send off to somebody else. Anyway, that's the next freebie. And the last freebie is another 8112. Now I've got three of them. <laughs> They're multiplying. Okay, so uh, definitely looks like I'll need to get one up and running and then maybe keep one for spare parts. So, uh, or I've got four now, right? One, two, no, one, two, three. I've got three of them. So yeah, so fix one up and uh, keep one. So I guess that makes sense. Um, anyway, uh, there you go. Uh, can't ever pass up free. All right, what do they say down under? Don't turn it on, take it apart. So it's got these cool little plastic uh, little thumb wheel things on here and then the, and then the cover slide off of it. So that's pretty wild. Uh, oh yeah, and then the whole thing slides. Oh, the top slides off too. Oh, very nice. So let's do that. Let me put it this way. Let me change the camera angle here. All right, so the sides slide out. And then the top slides off. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at the porn. Oh geez. Oh my goodness. Oh, let me sit this out of the way. Wow. Wow, do you see that? Do you see that? <laughs> All right, let's get in close. All right, how is that? Oh my goodness, look at these gears. Everything's geared together. Oh, look at that. So when you turn the knob on the front, there's a shaft that runs the entire length and then there's, there's, there's three gears here. So these all turn at the same time. So it's maybe like multiple sections of the filter that need to act together. And then this one over here, uh, yeah, again, you have three that, uh, three that actuate together. Uh, that's really super cool. I do like it. I do like it. And then down in there is all point to point wiring type of things. There's a PC board in there, but it's a lot of point to point wiring as well. Let's see, it just the bottom. Yeah, the bottom comes off too. All right. Uh, bottoms. Bottoms kind of boring. Bottoms just the PC board. And the power supply. Ooh, really old school uh, capacitors there. Maybe we'll have to uh, change those before we power it up. Yeah, you can kind of see there's some. Uh, brick brick components here potted components those are kind of interesting um, what else have we got going on here this just looks like the power supply these two this section here look at these little guys these little guys are cute <laughs> yeah definitely rep gonna replace those they're easy to do and they're they're super cute but probably non-functional <laughs> and i see some other caps this looks pretty kind of solid down there though he looks like it might be okay all the other caps look like good quality and stuff. I don't see any other electrolytics just at first glance other than right down there. So, yeah. Looky there. Pretty amazing.
All right, so uh, yeah, this will be in the next up and coming video, I think. I think I will uh, get this guy up and running so we can uh, send some signals through him and see if it works. All right, I've got a manual. Um, solid state, wide range, bandpass filter. Uh, Mr. Crone and Mr. Height uh, created the uh, Crone Height Corporation. They were both MIT graduates, so of course they have set up shop in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Nice place, been there. Um, let's see, this is the one we have, the 3103. This is the 3103R rack mount version. That's what the R stands for. And this is how it works. This is all the cool things. This is how to do maintenance on it. Oh, here we go. Schematics in the back. All right. So, all right. so there's a change order also. I could go through the change order. But I took a look at the uh, power supply. I was worried about these uh, capacitors here. And they're only 500 uh, microfarads. <laughs> so back then, I don't know what the date code is. Any, if I can find a date code in here. Here's some sprig capacitors. I don't see any date codes on anything yet. Anyway, uh, 500 microfarad capacitors, and then there are a couple other ones that are 100 microfarad. There's three here that are 100 microfarad capacitors, and they are on the board here. They are sprigs, and these are probably sprigs, of course. And then I think there's one other one way down there, and that one looks like it probably needs to be replaced, that one down there. Um, oh, there's one over there, too. Uh, there's a couple of them. And there's a couple of them. Now, should I or shouldn't I? There's been some debate on whether you should just jump in and replace things or whether you should give it a try. Maybe it's okay. Wow, that's a crusty PC board there. Um, what I was thinking I might do... The only one I'm really worried about are these two at the beginning. Um, I could probably lift... Lift the one wire off of these and check them in, uh, remove one side and then check them. I think I'll do that. Um, get out my, uh, get out my LCR meter and we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, we'll go ahead and give these a try. I think actually I'll just snip them. I'm going to, I think I'm going to replace these anyway. So I think I'm just going to snip, snip this one and snip this one. Now they're separated. Now I can do a test. Well, 500, capa 500 microfarad capacitor. Looks okay to me. How about this one? 500 microfarad capacitor. What's the what is the ESR on these things? Let's see here. Can I do ESR if I have a series? Let's see here. I think I need to do. And there we go. ESR 0.16. Okay, that one looks good. And what's the ESR on this one? Oops. Uh, I think I'm shorting out to something here. Oh, yeah, this one's shorting out. Yeah, 0.2 ohms. Okay, I think those capacitors are good. So I'll solder this back on and let's power it up. Okay, I'm pretty sure these two capacitors here are the output. So it's supposed to be plus or minus 10 volts. So let's go ahead and turn it on. There we go. Uh, 9 volts on that one. And we should get minus 10 volts over here. Minus 10.1, so there you go. Power supply is working great. Uh, so, I think this one is a um, reference voltage. Let's measure that one. It's like a 5 volt reference. That's a 10 volt reference. Yeah, I think this is a 10 volt reference. So I think the way this thing works is uh, the power supply generates a, 12 volt, a 10 volt reference and then it uses that and the inverse of that to, to, to regulate both sides. So that seems to be working out good. And a tiny little transformer. So this is not a very, very big, uh, not a very big transformer. All right, so I've put a scope probe on uh, the 10 volt side and we can go look. And I don't see any ripple at all. Boy, that's a solid 10 volts. 
So we're at five volts division, so one, two. Very thing looks very good. Let's look at the minus side. Minus side is very, very good too. So, hmm, so that must be it. There must be ripple over there. So let's go look at ripple. All right, so how do you look at ripple? Well, what you do is you AC couple it first. Go to AC. Now it'll be right there at the center. And now we can make the uh, scale bigger. This is one volt, one volt per division. Let's do 100 millivolts per division. And let's move way out in uh, frequency. Yeah, there is a little bit there, but I really don't see it. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to display and I'm going to hit in uh, persistence time and we will increase the persistence, uh, persistence time to infinite. And so if it sees anything, it will start to display it on the screen, okay? And we can change the intensity of that so we can see it a little bit better. So there is noise there and it's on the order of 100 millivolts. Um, 100 millivolts or ripple should be just fine in, a, in, a, uh, in an instrument like this. So yeah, I think we're doing good. So we did not check these capacitors. These are these uh, 100 microfarad capacitors, the three of them, and uh, they might be dead. Uh, we could lift one of those and test it. All right, so I'm outputting uh, one kilohertz and it's coming through the filter and over there. And then if I grab this knob and I change the uh, filter response, you can see it's going down. So let's see, this is the low cut and this is the high cut so the high high pass low pass so this will allow low low frequencies to go through or not okay so if we set it to uh let's see it's set to 10 kilohertz right now so 10 kilohertz uh cut frequency is well above a, a kilohertz so you can see that it's nice and big okay so if i change this from 10 kilohertz maximum to one kilohertz maximum, then this is one kilohertz cutoff, 1500, 2000, uh, 3000, 4, so you can see that um, I stopped triggering. Uh, let me move my trigger level down. There. Uh, you can see it goes down. And so, yeah, so the filter seems to be operating just fine. If I go down to uh, 100 hertz, then it's letting through, it's letting through a lot. In fact, it's gone off scale. There we go. So, one, two, yeah, so that's full. That's a, I'm putting in one volt, and now we're getting one volt out. So, one volt at uh, 100, 200. 500 and we're coming there we go see it's starting to wiggle so at 700 it was just starting to be noticeable and then at 1k it's starting to come down so if we had a 500 hertz filter it's letting through our 1k just fine but it would be uh, removing everything below uh, uh, everything below 500 hertz so yeah it's pretty cool so it's removing everything below 500 hertz, and then we could remove everything above a kilohertz. Let's see. Let's see if we can use the high the high side now. Uh, we'll leave this here. Now on the high side, if we come down to there we go. If we come down to uh, we're on the times 10, so this would be 2,000 hertz. 2,000. We're starting to see a little bit of moving here at 1,500. And then by the time we get to a thousand, yeah, so it's, it looks like it's pretty well calibrated.